The other reason why it's important to know these risks is because there's times where these risks mean that HRT may not be suitable for you. Hello and welcome to A Doctor's View, a podcast looking at everyday health topics and life through a doctor's eyes. Please note that all opinions are my own and should not replace the advice given to you by your own doctor. I'm Dr. Bolivios. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to Doctor's View. I'm Dr. Bolivios. A very warm welcome to those joining us for the first time and I hope you like and subscribe and continue to listen. And of course, a very warm welcome back to regular listeners. Today, we're going to be discussing menopause and HRT. HRT stands for Hormone Replacement Therapy. What I plan to do in this episode is explain what the menopause is and also the symptoms and and signs that uh, come with menopause and what the treatment options are for it and mainly the treatment that we're going to be focusing on and the risks and benefits of it are HRT, hormone replacement therapy. So let's begin. So firstly, what is menopause? Well, menopause is when a woman stops having periods and is no longer able to become pregnant naturally. Now, this occurs over a few months or in some cases a few years before periods stop altogether. And it's a natural part of aging and usually occurs between 45 and 55 years of age. Now, the average in the UK is 51 years old for a woman to reach menopause. Approximately 1 in 100, so 1% of women under the age of 40 will also experience menopause and this is known as premature menopause. Now menopause is associated with certain symptoms and virtually all women will experience some form of symptoms of the menopause. Some can be pretty mild and manageable and others can be quite severe and have quite a high significant impact on uh, on your everyday activities and some of these symptoms include hot flushes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, difficulty sleeping, decreased sex drive as well as low mood, anxiety and in some cases problems with memory or concentration. Now the symptoms can begin months or in some cases years before periods actually stop and can last for around four years and some women however do experience these symptoms for much longer. So what I'm going to talk to you about now is some of the different treatment options and then we're going to go into the HRT side of things. Now before we go into the uh, symptom control and all the different management options I do want to explain briefly what the menopause um, is caused by. We've explained what it is and we've defined it but I want to give a a very basic understanding of just some of the hormonal changes that occur and this may help explain some of the different treatment options that are available. So the menopause can be caused by either the natural physiology of of the body getting older which I'll talk about in a second or it can be caused iatrogenically and what I mean by that is caused by a treatment uh, such as a surgery to remove the ovaries um, or certain type of breast cancer treatments, chemotherapy, radiotherapy or there may even be an underlying medical condition which has um, caused menopause to occur early or cause it to occur right from the very start conditions like down syndrome addison's disease um, and there's a few others as well now in terms of the normal physiological um, uh, changes that occur as we get older um, in women what will happen is the ovaries stop producing as much of a hormone called estrogen and progesterone and no longer releases an egg each month and it's this lack of hormones that causes a huge amount of the symptoms that occur and this is where uh, the different treatment options come into it to try and uh, limit the effect that the decreased levels of estrogen and progesterone have on the body. Now here in the UK you can go to your GP and your GP can help confirm whether or not you are indeed suffering from symptoms of menopause or if it's anything else that needs to be investigated. They can also advise you on different lifestyle changes that can help with some of the symptoms as well as some of the various treatment options and symptom control treatment options that are available to you. So what are these treatment options that are actually available? Well firstly 
there is very simple things that can be taken, uh, simple measures. These are including eating a very healthy, balanced diet and exercising regularly. Now, this might sound flippant, but maintaining a healthy weight and being fit and strong can actually help improve some of the symptoms of, of menopause and has been shown to do so. Next, we have things like cognitive behavioral therapy, things like CBT. This is a type of talking therapy. And the reason why this can be recommended to uh, patients suffering with menopausal symptoms is because it does help with low mood and anxiety. And it is very successful in doing so. And this can sometimes be the main symptom that uh, women are, are complaining of, just the, the low mood. Uh, loss of libido and these are important lifestyle uh, impacts that, that take place so CBT is a very effective way of helping to combat that this can be accompanied with things like antidepressants and um, and some medications however there are positives and negatives with that too and that is a its own podcast in its own right so your GP can help advise with that but CBT is something that is offered to patients with menopausal symptoms with suffering from low mood. Now there are a few other alternative therapies but I'm going to talk about the big one first the HRT the hormone replacement therapy and then I'm going to go talk about the alternative side of things. Um, it makes more sense in that order because what I can do is discuss the um, hormone replacement therapy treatment and then once you've got an idea of what that involves you can then listen to the alternatives of that um, to try and replicate the the benefits of the HRT itself. So HRT first became available in the 1940s and then became more widespreadly used in the 1960s and in terms of alleviating symptoms of menopause it was a revolution. It was prescribed very commonly and helped relieve symptoms such as the hot flushes, night sweats and sleep disturbances that women were um, experiencing through the menopause. Later on in the 90s there were a couple of studies that were quite large and they um, took a randomized controlled trial uh, in the states and were looking at the risks of HRT. And there were two main concerns that these studies showed. One was that the extended use of HRT can increase the risk of breast cancer. And the second was that the increased use of HRT, the prolonged use of HRT, increases the risk of heart disease. And this led to a lot of controversy with HRT and many GPs and many uh, doctors were becoming more reluctant to prescribe it. So what I'm going to do is talk about um, the benefits of the HRT as well as the risks uh, in this discussion as well. HRT, as we said before, stands for hormone replacement therapy and it does exactly that. We've said that in menopause you have decreased levels of estrogen and progesterone and these cause the side effects that uh, women experience during menopause and that's what HRT aims to replace. It aims to replace the estrogen which is um, uh, produced in the ovaries as well as the progesterone which is also produced in the ovaries as well and it involves either taking both of these hormones which is a combined HRT or just taking estrogen only and that's estrogen only HRT. Now most women take the combined HRT because taking estrogen on its own can increase risk of developing womb cancer, endometrial cancer and so it's mainly reserved for women who have had hysterectomies where that risk is no longer there. However, uh, taking the progesterone alongside the estrogen, it minimizes this risk. So there are different ways of taking HRT and your GP can or, or a healthcare practitioner can help talk through the different pros and cons of each option. I'll run through the most common methods of, of taking HRT. Firstly, there's tablets. Tablets are by far and away the most common way of taking HRT. It's easy. It's taken usually once a day and once it becomes incorporated into everyday routine, it becomes a natural and easy way of taking it. There's a few things to know about tablets, however, and that is the, some of the normal risks that are associated with HRT, they can be increased with tablet taking. So things like blood clots, the risks are higher with tablets than taking other, other forms of HRT, which I'll talk about now. Next, you've got skin patches. 
this is also an easy way of, of taking HRT and it's a form of topical treatment and topical meaning it's applied to the skin. And in the same way like a nicotine patch, it's it's put onto the skin and it's changed every few days. Um, there's You can get it in both the estrogen only and, and the combined uh, form as well. And it's again, it, it's it's an it's a convenient way of taking HRT. Some people may find it more convenient than taking a tablet each day, and it's been shown that some some side effects of the HRT can be avoided whilst using using patches, and they don't have the same risks as the tablets do. Estrogen gel. This is another form of topical um, HRT treatment, and again, that means it's applied to the skin and it's absorbed by the body. So it's also convenient too. Uh, it's rubbed on the skin uh, once a day. And the issue with this is that it's it's an estrogen-only uh, form of HRT. So if you still have a womb, you're still at risk of um, endometrial carcinoma, endometrial cancer. So you must take progesterone separately as well to avoid those risks. There's also implants. Implants in the UK, at least, aren't the most widely available. Um, not the used the most often. But what they are, they they are small little implants, as the name name implies, and they go underneath the skin and they sit there and usually very well un, unnoticed at all. They they you're injected with a little bit of local anaesthetic to numb the area, and the implant is inserted usually in the abdomen, just under the skin. So it's this is quite a convenient option, and the reason is is uh, one it goes unnoticed once it's in, you forget about it. But also it lasts for um, several months before it needs to be replaced. So what it does is it it slowly releases um, out the the estrogen over time, and like I say, it can it can stay in place several months. And one side the downside of it is that. Like some of the others, it is an estrogen only uh, form of HRT, so you would still need to be taking progesterone separately too to avoid the risks of endometrial cancer if if you still uh, have a womb. Next is other forms of topical treatment. Uh, again, things that are applied to the skin, or um, uh, in this case, it's vaginal estrogen, so it's, it's placed inside the vagina. And this is in the form of cream or a pessary. And a pessary is a device that goes inside the vagina to help, um, and, and it just slowly releases estrogen out. And this can help relieve uh, dryness as well as other symptoms as well. One plus side is that it doesn't carry uh, the usual risks of HRT. And also, even though it is estrogen only form of HRT, you don't need to take progesterone separately. Um, you don't have the usual risks of endometrial carcinoma, um, even if you still have a, a womb in place. Next is more of a supplement, and that is testosterone. And this is usually a gel that, that goes onto the skin. And the reason this is a supplement is it doesn't replace HRT. It doesn't replace the normal estrogen progesterone um, treatment therapy. But what it does do is it's provided for women who have a low sex drive, whose sex drive libido has not improved after taking HRT. And so this is the next step to try and um, try and help with those symptoms. And again, there's risks and benefits with everything. So this is something that needs to be discussed with your health practitioner, with your doctor, to see if this is something that that should be made available to you or could be made available to you and together decide. Um, It's an easy way of applying. It's a gel that rubs into the skin. But again, it's not um, it's not a replacement for for HRT itself. It just supplements the the HRT if it hasn't helped with that symptom. There's different treatment regimes for HRT, and these are either cyclical or continuous. And I'll explain that in a in a second. And what determines whether you go on one treatment or another will determine whether you still have periods or whether you are postmenopausal and no longer no longer have periods. So for women who are experiencing menopausal symptoms but still have periods, they 
it tends to be put on a, a cyclical regime and there's two different ways it's either a monthly or a three monthly I won't go into the minutia of these regimes in terms of when the tablets are taken, uh, wh which different points of the mental cycle, but there is a wealth of information on the NHS website and they do go into quite good detail in terms of the different regimes there. So the um, continuous combined HRT, this is essentially, as the name implies it is a continuous treatment so it's uh, the 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 HRT is taking the estrogen and progesterone every single day there's no break uh, there's no natural stop and this is for women who are postmenopausal or said to be postmenopausal and by that it's implying that they no longer um, have a period in the UK at least this is when they haven't had a period for a year or so before I go on, it is important to mention one thing, and that is taking HRT does not actually prolong the menopause. It doesn't delay it in any way. It simply helps manage the symptoms and the side effects of the menopause. So it's not a means of preventing it from happening in the first place. The menopause will still occur. HRT is simply a management for the, the symptoms and the side effects. So we've already touched on the reasons why you would take HRT and many of the symptoms that we've discussed, things like the hot flushes, night sweats, mood swings, etc. They do pass in a few years um, of, of being in, within the menopause. However, they can be very unpleasant and taking HRT can offer you know, huge relief for, for many women, as well as helping to reduce the risk of osteoporosis. And osteoporosis is a disease where your bones become weak. And this um, can actually occur in men too. However, it's mainly in postmenopausal women. And the reason is because of the decreased amount of estrogen and it causes brittle bones. And HRT can help uh, prevent this. But as well as these benefits, as with everything in, in medicine with benefits come risks and side effects. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about the different side effects and some of the risks. Uh, you've heard me talk about them a little bit earlier um, with regards to those studies in the 90s and breast cancer and heart disease and so forth. Now because HRT is usually taken in a combined form, estrogen and progesterone, there are side effects for taking both. There's side effects for estrogen and there's side effects for progesterone. Side effects of estrogen can include things like bloating, breast tenderness, swelling, feeling nauseous, some cramps, headaches, indigestion, sometimes vaginal bleeding too. And as with a lot of medicines, these side effects do often pass in a few weeks, but um, in the meantime, it's important to keep an eye on them and to keep your GP updated. And they may recommend switching you from one type of um, uh, method of taking it to another. For example, taking it from a tablet to a patch. But it depends on the specific side effects you're taking and um, also the compromise between yourself and, and your medical practitioner. There's side effects of progesterone too. Um, some of these do overlap, so things like breast tenderness, swelling, um, headaches, but also things like mood swings, depression, acne. You can get some abdominal pain too and back pain. And again, like with the effects of uh, estrogen, the side effects do usually pass within a few, few weeks, but you can be recommended other types um, of methods of taking it if these symptoms don't pass. There has also been talk that HRT does contribute to increasing weight. Um, as far as I'm aware, I've just looked up on some um, various sources. I can't see any clear evidence that, that this um, exists. There's no real evidence to suggest that taking HRT will make you put on weight. Um, you may gain weight during the menopause, but... I, that's not necessarily a, a, an effect of the HRT itself. So it's important to keep exercising regularly and to eat healthily to help uh, lose any unwanted weight too. As with everything, there's mild side effects or less serious side effects like the ones I've, I've 
spoken about. Yes, they are very unpleasant and can be very unpleasant, but there are the more serious risks as well. And so, as we've said before, HRT has been associated with some serious risks, such as increased risk of blood clots, certain types of cancer, heart disease. So what I'm going to do is going to run through a few of the different uh, serious risks to help um, give you an idea of of how um, how serious they are and also the, the risk factors involved in them. Whatever treatment you're taking, it's always important to know the risks and the benefits of that medicine or that treatment plan that you're taking. And the reason is, is so you can make um, a judgment from yourself to decide whether something is right for you. Are you willing to take the risks of something in order to obtain their benefits? So on that note, it's important to consider HRT as one of a range of interventions. So HRT might not be right for you, but there are other things that can be done too. And as we said earlier, many studies have been done um, on HRT that have highlighted the potential risks. And as we've said, many women, some doctors and have been reluctant to, to use HRT or prescribe HRT. But as time's gone on, there's been some evidence to suggest that the risks of HRT are quite small and are usually outweighed by the benefits. However, again, it's important to know the numbers for yourself, to do the reading for yourself, to speak to your healthcare practitioner and to make an informed decision. So I'm going to talk about some of the more serious risks. So breast cancer, there is evidence to show that taking the combined, the HRT, uh, estrogen and progesterone is associated with small increased risk of breast cancer. And some studies have suggested that for every thousand women that take the combined HRT, there'll be around five extra cases of breast cancer. So from a normal risk of 22 cases per thousand women to 27. This might not sound like a lot or a big difference, but to some women, say especially if you have a family history of breast cancer, it might be a dramatic difference. Now, there there is some estimates that suggest that the level of risk returns to normal after around five years, um, and the risk of breast cancer decreases again when you stop taking the HRT. So again, these are all part of your informed decision process that you need to discuss with your health practitioner. Estrogen only HRT. It had very little or no change in the risk of breast cancer, depending on, on the sources that you use. It's mainly the, the combined one that increases your risk of, of uh, breast cancer. However, um, again, there's only a certain percentage of women that can take the estrogen only ones. So it's important to know. And because of the increased risk of breast cancer, it's, it's, it's also important to attend all the breast cancer screening appointments if you're taking the combined HRT. Ovarian cancer, there have been some studies to look at whether um, HRT can cause an increased risk of ovarian cancer and there's been some conflicting results. It's thought that if there's any increase in risk of ovarian cancer uh, whilst taking for taking HRT, that risk is quite small. And I think a recent study showed that for every thousand women taking HRT for five years, there'll be one extra case of ovarian cancer. So it's it's negligible, but it's thought that it's still there. And any risk of ovarian cancer is thought to decrease again once you stop taking the HRT. Womb cancer, uh, we, we touched on this earlier on, that estrogen-only HRT can increase the risk of womb cancer, and this we know, and it's also called endometrial cancer. And that's why the estrogen-only HRT is used in women who do not have a womb. So, for example, if they've had a hysterectomy for a, a different reason in the past. Taking the combined HRT, the one with estrogen and progesterone, particularly in the continuous um, method, the continuous HRT, we take both medicines without a regular break. This largely eliminates this risk. If you still have a womb and you're taking HRT, it's important to take both medicines as advised um, just to avoid this increased risk of womb cancer. Blood clots is often quite a, a one we talk about a lot in hospitals. And blood clots are important because um, they can be very, very serious and they can, can be very, very deadly. And the reason they can be very deadly is because they can accumulate in, in a blood vessel 
and block the flow of blood into various organs like the lungs. It can help, it can cause strokes, it can cause heart attacks. And this is, as you know, can be fatal. So it's important to know this risk too. And there is evidence to show that taking HRT tablets can increase the risk of blood clots. There is no increased risk of blood clots apparently with HRT from patches or gels. Um, but it is thought that the risk of developing a blood clot is about two to four times higher than normal for women taking HRT tablets. Um, but as the risk of menopause women developing a, a blood clot is normally quite low, the overall risk is still thought to be quite small. Um, what I mean by that is there's certain um, age groups that are at higher risk of developing blood clots or, or certain physiological states that are increasing your risk of developing blood clots, for example, malignancy or pregnancy. And menopause women on the whole have quite a low risk of developing a blood clot, but still that risk, however low it is, is increased by taking HRT tablets. And it's estimated that for every thousand women taking HRT tablets for seven and a half years, fewer than two will develop a blood clot. However, the risk is still there. Heart disease and strokes, and this does kind of correlate between the, the blood clots. It's all that HRT does not significantly increase the risk of um, cardiovascular disease, including heart disease and strokes when started before 60 years of age. So I do apologize for all the doom and gloom in terms of the, the risks involved with, with things like this. But it is important to know that nothing we do is risk-free. And that includes even when you have the best interest. So giving giving a medicine that can help improve symptoms dramatically, it's not without its risks. And that's essentially what I'm trying to portray. The other reason why it's important to know these risks is because there's times where these risks mean that HRT may not be suitable for you. And what I mean by that is, if you have a history of breast cancer, history of ovarian cancer or womb cancer, you may not be suitable for HRT. Again, if you've got history of blood clots in the family, history of DVT, that's deep vein thrombosis, or PE, that's pulmonary embolism, or high degree of uh, heart rate, um, heart disease, excuse me, in the family, then again, this is... Um, this may be a contraindication for taking HRT and that's something that needs to be discussed with your healthcare practitioner. You may have uncontrolled high blood pressure and again this increases your risks of various things and so your blood pressure will need to be controlled before you can start HRT. You may have liver disease. It's also uh, important to note it's still possible to get pregnant while on HRT. And contraception will still need to be used um, after your last period for different lengths of time, uh, depending on whether your last period was before you were 50 years old or after 50 years old. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through uh, the side effects that women complain about in the menopause, the ones that cause them the most bother and the ones that HRT is aimed to treat and I'm going to give the alternatives for them because HRT as we've said may not be for everyone. You may have looked at the risks and the benefits and decided it's not for you or it may be that you are unable to take it for various health reasons or for family history reasons. So the first um, main complaint or main symptom rather that um, women find very unbearable is the hot flushes and night sweats and if you experience hot flushes and night sweats as a result of menopause there, there's some simple things that can be done as um, as just an alternative to HRT. Some of these are very obvious things like wearing light clothing, keeping the bedroom cold at night and taking cool showers using fans but there's also things like trying to reduce stress levels avoiding potential triggers, things like spicy food, caffeine, smoking, alcohol, all these things actually can precipitate a, a hot flush. So it's very important to take regular ex exercise and also losing weight as well has been shown to help decrease the hot flushes and night sweats. And this is just simple things that can be done to help uh, with, with these symptoms if HRT isn't suitable for you. There are also some medicines that can help with these symptoms as well, including things like antidepressants and, and some blood pressure medicines. But again, that's a discussion between yourselves and the 
and the healthcare practitioner to look at your circumstance. Mood changes is another uh, common s- symptom of um, menopause and some women experience quite severe mood swings, low mood and anxiety around this time in their lives. And there are some measures and we've we've discussed CBT briefly. Um, I can do a, a, an episode on CBT if you'd like me to do so. Um, but there are some self-help measures things like getting plenty of rest, taking regular exercise, doing relaxing activities, yoga, etc. And there are obviously medical routes too. So there are some medicines, things like antidepressants can help uh, if you've been diagnosed with depression at this time. And again, uh, your your general practitioner can, can help advise you on this. Things like the reduced sexual desire. It is very common for women to lose interest in sex around the time of the menopause. And often HRT can help with this. But as we've said, it may not be um, for you or you may not be able to take it. So what can be offered? There is um, the testosterone gel that can be offered, as we touched on earlier at the start of the show. There are side effects with the testosterone supplements, things like acne, unwanted hair growth. And it's it doesn't come without its its risks either. So again, it's something to look into, but just know there is certain things that can be done. But um, on the whole, it's, it's going to be a, a long discussion between yourself and your medical professional. The vaginal dryness and discomfort. This um, is usually dealt with topically. Um, what that means is in the form of a, a, tree, a cream or a pessary ring, a vaginal ring, and it usually releases hormone like estrogen. And this can be safely used alongside HRT, as I think I said earlier, but um, also if, um, if HRT is not available for you, you can also use over-the-counter moisturizers, lubricants, and um, vaginal estrogen too that can help with the vaginal dryness too. The weak bones. We mentioned that osteoporosis is is a common problem as women get older and and are postmenopausal. And although HRT can help prevent against osteoporosis, um, like we say, you may not be able to take it. So there's things to do Um, that you can do to help prevent the bones from becoming weak. One of those things, exercise regularly and eating a healthy diet. This seems to be common themes in a lot of the symptoms, but often you will find that the women who suffer the most from the symptoms of menopause or a lot, uh, this isn't just solely for women, just the population that suffer the most in terms of symptoms and side effects and things tend to be the ones that are unhealthy in their weight and their diet. And it it makes such a big difference to everything. So exercising regularly, eating a healthy diet and getting some sunlight too, which stimulates production of vitamin D, which can help keep your bones strong. Also things like stopping smoking, cutting down on alcohol, taking vitamin supplements, the calcium or vitamin D supplements, and they your your levels can be discussed with your GP or medical practitioner and they can advise you as to whether you need uh, prescription supplements or whether you can just use over-the-counter ones and you know they you can have a chat with them about that. Also it's important to have follow-up appointments. So just making sure that your Returning to your, your your healthcare practitioner every few months for a follow up, and just to ensure that everything is is under control, or just if if you're having further side effects from either treatments that've been offered to you or from the menopause themselves, just to ensure that it's under control. It's it's important not to be unhappy, and if there's something that can be done to help improve the quality of life, then that should be offered. Now, I have to say, for the sake of balanced argument there are also things like alternative and complementary therapies i don't know anything about them um things like bioidentical hormones and or, or and herbal things all i know is the the scientific evidence behind them is is very minimal um i can't speak for everyone in terms of if it helps or not um but i have to say that they are out there but please do be careful when researching things like this um be very wary of Dr. Google, do proper informed research, discuss it with your doctor, have a have a chat about what you're going to do because some things can cause more harm than good. So just be wary of it. 
I think that's enough for one episode. I hope it's been informative and given an idea for anyone interested in the menopause and HRT or anyone worried about uh, a family member who might be going through it and wants to give some some advice. It's just there to show that HRT is not the only answer. And yes, it's not risk free. It does have some benefits too. Um, Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. But it's important to make an informed decision uh, between yourselves um, or your relatives and their doctor and their medical practitioner just to ensure that you're on the correct treatment for you and to know the risks involved. I hope it's been educational. I hope it's uh, helped put your mind at rest for some things or made you want to ask questions about others. If there are any other topics that you'd like me to discuss on this show, please do email me. My email is a view at gmail.com and that can be found in the description above or below this episode, depending on which platform you're listening to. And I promise I'll do my very best to answer those topics in future episodes. Please do subscribe for future episodes. Uh, this is a weekly podcast and I aim to release a podcast every Wednesday. As always... Please look after yourselves and I will join you again next time. I'm Dr. Bolivios. Goodbye.